G'day, it's Dan here from League of Brewers, top of the South Island, New Zealand, and today I'm back in my home brewery slash distillery with uh, the G40 and the Still Spirits of Lambic Dome here, and I am distilling some honey that I've fermented. So this is uh, Melter Honey, which is a product from Tasman Bay honey extraction and basically what happens is at the end of every day when they're cleaning out the uh, the extraction or the spinner they have to get all that honey out and clean for, for the next day so basically what happens is it gets heated up and caramelized and that turns that honey into sort of a reminiscent molasses really it's um it's quite unique it's got a really nice flavor and uh, we're very lucky to have the product at League of Brewers. So I thought, why not give it a go and do a wash and see what comes out. So I let the honey wash ferment for about two months. I added some funky um, bacteria, lactobacillus, and I also added some defrosted bananas that I had in the freezer. I've added all sorts of stuff in there to give it some complexity and I'm really excited to see what comes out of this. So this is the stripping run I'm doing here um, with G40 and I'm hoping to collect around about 10 litres of uh, spirit. So once I've done that I'll um, water that back and do some cuts on, on a second run. So or on the spirit run. So yeah, uh, totally capable unit here this G40 is um, it has voltage control and that makes it really handy for for distilling so I'll be using that on the on the spirit run um, the alambic dome that is a solid piece of copper there it's amazing really when I first saw these arrive I was like whoa this is super heavy good gauge copper and um, so I'm hoping this is gonna bring through some really good flavor into the spirit so I'll be back with the the spirit run and um, do some cuts and yeah we'll go from there cool talk to you soon alrighty welcome back here folks so I'm back uh, a couple of days after my stripping run and I've collected here a good amount of alcohol um, which will go back into the distillation and we're going to do a spirit run, which basically means we're going to separate all of the unwanted alcohols into separate jars and we're only going to collect the good stuff. So, yeah, I've got about 14 litres here from my run. Um, it smells interesting. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting the final product, but it smells sort of banana ish, sort of honey ish, sort of uh, slight burnt rummy smell so yeah what we'll do is we'll get into it and uh, we're going to pour all this into our G40 they about 14 litres we'll measure the uh, the alcohol content to find out what we've got all together and then basically water it back with some um, good drinking water and start the distillation process again. Do not light a match in here. All right, folks, so we've got all of our alcohol mixed together here. Because I've collected this just in one round stripping run, the the first collection demijohn would have had a, a higher alcohol content than the final run um, in the last demijohn. So we've got heads and tails and everything in here. So we'll give this a measure with our trusty alco meter here. Bit more and we shall find the alcohol content
that's actually bang on 45 so there's not a lot of water I'm going to need to add to, to this to do my spirit run in fact it's probably okay at 45 so yeah everything's in there 14 liters 45 percent and then we'll do our stripping run uh, we've done our sorry we've done our stripping run we'll do our um our cuts to follow this so yeah we'll get the distillation lid on one second <clears throat> there she goes the beautiful g40 so yeah we'll heat that up get it coming up to a boil it won't be quite a boil um and we'll do some cuts so i'll be back for that section very shortly all right folks so we're um coming up to close to temperature here the temperatures are reading about 62 so we want to start um connecting our water supply here so you might see this weird stainless coil here um i've just added that in as a as an extra precautionary for sulfides basically i love copper and copper um, is very good in the distillation in terms of contact um, with copper from the alcohol so I've just made this little arm here just to bring the the overall height down as well um, but yeah that is as the distillation comes through we're going to get this contact with copper here and that just helps with the uh, sulfide reduction so yeah we'll connect our water here and as soon as we're at temperature about 65 degrees i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna turn this water on back in a minute so i've just managed to hook up the water and just in time um it seems the distillation has, has just started here so we're into what's called the four shots which is all of the unwanted um varnish remover you know fingernail polish remover um alcohols here so we're going to switch through into voltage control now um which is going to give us good control during the um, distillation process and that is handy when you're wanting to slow it down so basically um you can run this in increments of five percent um, and I've experienced this before running at about 45% voltage just keeps the the steam rising nicely it's not boiling profusely in there um, especially with a with such a small volume that we have in the bottom here we've got 40% um, alcohol in a in a, a 15 litres of in a um, in a huge distillation unit here so we don't need a huge boil um, thermostat control doesn't really work because that's up down up down whereas the voltage control just gives it a consistent um, bit of energy basically into the element so yeah you can see that here it's rolling nicely I might even be able to dial that down to 40% let's see what that does we roll it down to 40% voltage good for power saving as well you know you're not running your, your uh, an element at full scale for you know three or four hours so yeah this looks like um we've got a steady flow here and we'll see how far into the four shots we go before we switch over to heads okay folks so our four shots jar here is um, pretty much full i'm going to switch over to number two jar and see what we collect in that one Oh, that smells gross. <laughs> so yeah, this is it's running quite nicely um, at 40% voltage. Um, it was running a little bit fast before, and um, before I could switch over to the to the next part of the video, um, I managed to probably overfill my four shots jar. But that's okay. Um, this part of it probably not going to keep anyway. Yeah, so we'll just keep switching these jars out. We're on to jar three now, which is this one here. Smells a lot different from the first one. This one here is starting to resemble a sort of 
burnt sort of banana-y uh, honey sort of aromas. Uh, the first one um, just smells like um, garbage, like sort of myths. So yeah, we'll just keep switching these jars out until we're happy with the aroma and the flavour that's coming off this. That needs to keep going. Sort of soapy, almost. Yeah, 40%, 40% voltage is um, perfect for the, the volume that I've got in here. So I put around about 14 litres in at 40%. And I wouldn't want to be running it too much hotter um, at the speed that's coming out. It's coming out fairly, fairly fast. Now this distillation's um, actually happening faster than I thought it would. So yeah, we're into jar five now. Make sure I've got jar five. Got jar five. There it is, jar five. Swap that out. We won't be far off the hearts, I don't think. What does this taste like? Yeah, oh, I can really taste the honey coming through there. Sort of burnt honey. I'm really getting that burnt honey. It's quite nice. So yeah, well, um, I'll keep running on that one. Jar number five, and we'll see where we get. And um, I doubt we'll be far off actually collecting into a large jar and then letting it roll for a bit, so. So I'm pretty happy with that. We're on jar five. And I'm going to start collecting into a large jar now. Pretty confident we're into the hearts. My apparatus is not quite the right height. So let's drop that down a bit. Oh, she's ticky. Lucky I've got an ice cream container here. We'll drop, bring that up. All right, so here we are. Yeah, we're into the hearts now. That's starting to taste really nice. Clean. I'm tasting honey. Getting that burnt um, honey flavor coming through. Not a lot of banana. Oh, I did put some bananas in there to um, give it some complexity. But yeah, like I say, I've got this down at 35% uh, voltage, and it's running just, just nicely here, just ticking over. Temperature in my tower, 81 degrees. And I, um, I'm not running this on 15 amps at the moment, I'm just running it on 10 amps. So yeah, if you were running it on 15 amp, you'd probably reduce the amount of power. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. But you, you'd want to reduce the power down maybe even further um, for this size boil or the, this amount of alcohol that's in there. So yeah, we'll roll on the hearts and um, let that go for a while and see, see what comes out of it. So this is really starting to change now, I'm getting flavours of um, the burnt part of the honey that's coming through. It's quite sort of caramel, sort of uh, toffee sort of notes. Quite nice. Um, yeah, I'm using the uh, the thermometer here. You can see that there. You probably won't see what it's reading, but it's at reading 83. I use this as a guide just to know sort of partly where I'm in in the distillation but the best advice is um, to taste and to smell what's coming through the distillate um, at the time and this smells great and tastes great so I'm looking forward to blending all this together um, tomorrow or at a later date once I've um, got my whole um, takings here so yeah We'll let this roll for probably another good hour or so, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so yeah, our heart jar here is very full, and uh, I think I need to switch it over to another one. So 
here we go. Easy does it. Straight on through. Look at that. So that jar there is about not quite, I think it's 1.25 or 2 litres. We'll measure it anyway um, later on. But yeah, that's um, it's tasting really good. Very clean. It's got that um, sort of like a bitter edge to it. I think that's the burnt element of the, um, the honey coming through. So yeah, roll on to jar heart number two. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the hearts here. Um, the flavour and the aroma here is um, reminiscent of banana and sort of like caramelised banana. It's quite nice, um, sort of rich sort of flavours. I've just brought the voltage down, um, back down from 40 down to 35, just to slow the um, the intensity of, of the boil in here and um, give me a bit more control towards the tail end of um, the distillation. So the volume in here will be, oh okay we've got a sight glass here. What is the volume? I can't actually see that. Oh, it's about 8 litres, so it's only about 8 litres there. Um, so it goes to show what we've pulled off the, the 14 litres. So folks, the, uh, the tail end is starting to just about come in now, so what I'm going to do is switch over to another jar and um, just so that I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket again here. So let's do that very carefully. And here she goes. So I could just taste the alcohol starting to drop off there. So the intensity's not quite what it was. Um, about 10 minutes ago. It's not bad, it's just uh, that the flavours are starting to, the alcohol content's definitely dropping off and the flavours are starting to change, so not a bad thing. We could use some of these tails and we definitely will use some of these tails in the, the final blending of the whole distillation that we're going to put together as um, a barrel of rum hopefully. So, so we're really into the tail end here and I've measured number 11 here, jar number 11, and it um, measures 50% alcohol. So that's definitely um, into the tail end of things. And I'm tasting this here coming out now, and I'm sort of guessing it's around about 20% maybe, so it's right down towards the end. The flavours aren't bad, it's quite, um, has, uh, has a lot of burnt sort of flavour in this end. So that might be a, a nice piece to add a bit of complexity to the whole blend once I've blended all these jars together and figured out what I want to keep. Yeah, so I'll cut this jar off here and then I'm going to run it into my final tails which will be just for um, a reflux run at, a, at another date. So um, I can run those tails um, through on a reflux run and um, attaching to the G40 actually so there is another attachment that you can get for this lid and it allows you to put the T500 reflux condenser on top. Uh, so we've also got uh, a new product which is a 50 centimeter copper tri-clamp extension tube so I'd put the extension tube then the column reflux and yeah on top of this so yeah um, it's a great unit um, but I'm going to sign off for tonight and these um, jars will be blended tomorrow and we'll, I'll decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to not keep and we'll age it on some wood and wait for an exciting time when we can give it a sample so I'll follow up with a video at a later date with that but uh, yeah I'll sign off for tonight and back for blending tomorrow. Cheers! Alright folks, uh, welcome back. Um, I'm back here with all of my cuts and um, I've got a whole array of different um, aromas and flavours across all of these jars here and uh, I was just checking out jar number three and um, it's got like a very um, high aroma of solvent. I actually tasted it as well and it doesn't taste any good so I think I'm going to leave that one out of my blend 
for today. Um, I don't want to risk that one. Number four, starting to sort of um, come through a bit cleaner. It's not quite as intense um, or aggressive on that sort of paint thinner sort of solvent. So I will think I'm going to sit on that one for a bit, but it could blend in okay. So yeah, um, this is where it comes down to your palette telling you what is going to go in and what is not going to go in. So if you're ever unsure as well, you can take a bit of your cut there and dilute it down with a bit of water just so as it's less aggressive um, and it's going to be more sort of in, in line with what you're actually going to end up with because it is going to be diluted so if you can dilute it now and just have a have a sniff and and a taste if you think that tastes okay diluted you can assume that um, the flavor there is is okay yeah still got that sort of um, heads flavor in it. I think it's probably going to blend in okay but I'm not 100% sure but I'm going to tip that back in there. I'm going to move to number number six. That's less sharp. It's definitely moving more towards honey. And less away from solvent. So that's that's jar number six there. And I think I'll probably start there in terms of what I'm gonna choose to blend today. So number six, can assume that number seven is gonna be good. Um, I've tasted number ten. I'll just tip that back into number six. Number ten uh, is sitting at eighty percent. Very clean, it's definitely hearts. So I've got hearts from number nine, or number eight through to number 10. Here's my hydrometer, alkometer, sitting in there. So yeah, um, now we need to decide from here on, this has gone down to 50% here, um, alcohol. So let's taste and smell that one. It's definitely got more of a burnt, that sort of caramelized burnt um, aroma coming through. And as it's not as strong as what I've been tasting here, because it's gone down to 50%, the water content has come up um, during the just distillation. And I think that's going to give actually some, um, some nice undertones of that uh, burnt honey flavor as the hearts here don't contain that as much that has more sort of like the clean honey um, flavor coming through but I'm after that sort of caramelized um, flavor to come through as well which I think will blend in quite nicely and this was my final we're running into the tails here uh, the percentage here I'm not aware of I don't have I haven't measured that Wow, that's real big on flavour. The tails have, um, yeah, there you. Um, very sort of um, earthy, um, what I say, earthy, burnt sort of flavours coming through there. And that's all sitting at 40%. So I'm quite keen to get those, those flavours in there. So what? I'm going to do is I'm going to blend all of these together. Let's hope we make something nice. So, I've got my bucket here, trusty bucket. Let's get rid of these ones here. And I'm going to tip in my 
Number six. Slight bit of heads in that one, but I'm quite keen on the flavour. Yeah, that's good. Number seven's good. Number eight's good. Number nine. Interesting to see what sort of volume I end up with here. It's quite a decent um, batch I've made. So this is a 10 litre bucket and we're already half full. And that's before we actually water this back. So we're going to water it back to 50% alcohol. Um, and we're going to age it on some chips. So I've got some... Um, some Jamaican, well they're Jamaican? Well they're plantation um, rum chips which have come from rum barrels. Um, most likely in the Caribbean where they make excellent rum. So I thought that's going to go quite well with the uh, the burnt honey um, flavours and the, the sort of caramelised wood here. So they do actually smell like rum. And I've aged, um, previously I've aged some mead on, on these wood chips um, from Still Spirits and they came out, it came out really nice. It just gave the mead, which is 14%, uh, it's 14%, gave the mead a real sort of nice rum background. So yeah, we'll age that on there. Um, now I need to take a sample here. So I'm going to need to take a sample out of here. My bucket is... Not quite full enough to grab a sample. Alright, what are we sitting at here? That's 75% alcohol. So to get this back to 50, what have I got here? I've got about 5 litres. So to get it back to 50, if I add one and a half litres of water to Gimwith, there are dilution calculators online. Um, I just like to wing it. So we'll just dilute as we go. That's a litre. We should be floating here now, so I'll get it mixing. And I'll be able to float my hydro my alco meter now. You can't see that, but it's sitting at 60. So I need another. I'm just going to add a bit of water. I'm not too worried here. I just want to get it down to 50% or thereabouts to age it on the wood. Another half litre. Okay, so that's t that's two litres of water. And we're sitting just about... We're sitting about 55 there. We'll call it... We'll call it... Oh no, it's 50. That's, that's about 50. So, yeah. I've got probably about 8 litres of 50% um, distilled caramelised honey spirit. Don't know what we're going to call it. I'm going to call it a honey rum or um, honey schnapps. So now we're going to go into our demijohn here. And I've got my rum chips which I'm going to weigh out. I think I'll put about 50 grams in here to start. You can always add more, but you can't take it out once it's been in there. So, well, I suppose you could take it out earlier, but in terms of um, setting it and forgetting it, I'm going to start with 50, gr uh, 50 grams. So I'll put our 50 grams of rum chips in the demijohn. That's 20, oh sorry, 30, 
and another 20 will make 50. Oh, get in there. Rightio. So before I do this, I do want to have a sample just to see what that tastes like. Smells really clean. It's got a aroma of um, that honey, but blended in quite nicely with that sort of caramelised background there, uh, which is coming through from the tails. Wow, that's really interesting. So yeah, it seems to be going all right. I just had a problem with the camera, it turned itself off. So I had to stop halfway through the pour. So I'm probably going to leave this on the wood in here for a good couple of months just to see what flavour comes out of it. If I find that I haven't pulled enough tannins um, or flavour from the wood, I can always add more. But starting with 50 grams, I think, in 5 litres, it's about 10 grams a litre. It's a good starting point. There she goes. Overfilled it. No dramas. We've actually got quite a bit left over in here, so I'll, um, I'm not sure what I'll do with that lot. I might age it on some... Um, some charred oak or some spiral well I might just leave it leave it for a bit and see how it comes out as a white spirit so there we have it folks we've got uh, five liters of 50% uh, honey rum sitting here on on rum chips so I'm looking forward to seeing the outcome of this I'll check back um, at a later date to review what what's uh, what the outcome is so hopefully this, this melds really nice, and um, yeah, I'll probably leave this spirit for now. Um, I could use it at a later date, maybe for blending back if I ever do it with the oak, which I, I doubt I will, but um, yeah. Alright, so we're back here folks, about a month later, and uh, this is the, the product here that's been sitting on the um, rum oak chips. So yeah, um, it's taken on a good amount of colour here. It's got like a nice golden hue. And um, I'm quite quite excited to, to give it a sample. So in terms of this being actually ready for consumption, we're going to find out. My guess is that it might take a bit longer um, to round off. And we'll see. So look at that. That's a beautiful colour there. Call that a golden rum, I suppose, if that's what we can call it, a rum. Uh, so my handy uh, wine thief there, or sample thief. So yeah, 50% golden rum, honey rum, honey schnapps, honey brandy, <laughs> who knows. So I've ordered that, that's 50% there, so 50 mils, if I add 10 mils, that'll bring it up to 40 42 percent so we'll give that a wee sample smells beautiful you can really smell that sort of caramelized honey there um, which is mixed with the the rum barrel chips giving it quite a nice sort of aroma sort of raisiny um, caramelly and a, a hint of honey so let's give that a wee sample not bad I think it needs a bit more depth from the oak so um, I'm gonna let that sit for a bit longer I might even add some uh, some more charred oak that's quite nice <laughs> I've got this charred oak here. Uh, these 
spirals. Um, so if I wanted to darken this up a little bit, I might add a little bit of that. So in terms of what I'm going to add, um, I think I'll probably add maybe a, a quarter of one of these at a time. I don't want to overdo it. So I'll, um, I'll break a bit of that off and then add it into my demijohn there. And this is to give it just a slight, a bit more complexity. Maybe the, um, there we go, the um, rum chips um, don't have that sort of depth that I'm looking for. I'll probably leave that in there for another sort of six weeks to see how it comes along. And I'm just going to taste this as it goes. If I feel like it needs more oak, I'll add more oak. Um, maybe I won't add any more charred oak. I might add some, um, some medium toast just to give it a bit of uh, vanilla sort of hints there. But yeah, I'll, I'll leave that there for sort of up to, up to four weeks. Uh, sorry, up to two months. So that'll be eight weeks. And we'll see how that comes along. So the exciting thing about aging some beverage, some rum like this, is um, you can sort of add as you go. Doesn't have to be all at once. And yeah, we'll come up with a, um, a solid recipe of how this works and for the for future proofing so yeah all right folks so yeah i hope you enjoyed the video um i'd love to hear any of your comments out there please comment on the video give us a thumbs up if you liked it any any of you guys out there that are um distilling honey or distilling rum bourbon whatever would love to hear some some of your thoughts on on the processes that i've gone through here in terms of the G40, I think it's uh, a real capable piece of kit, um, and I'm quite I'm quite happy with what's come through here, um, using the pot still attachment. Um, the voltage control is excellent for controlling that distillation process, which is really nice. And um, yeah, looking forward to using it again. So uh, maybe I'll have to do a whiskey next time. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please get in touch. We're on um, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, I'd love to hear from some of you cats out there. And uh, yeah, give us a holler. Cheers, everyone. Enjoy your Thursday evening. Cheers.